Ascension News, the Star Seed Writer. Dear Starseed, when I was growing up, I was drawn to books like a moth to a flame. I love reading, writing stories, though I gave up writing stories when I entered secondary school or high school, as you say in America. I never really ever thought I would be a writer one day. I did not really feel I had anything important to say or share. And perhaps you can relate with this. Uh, maybe you experienced growing up where your innate drive to be creatively self-expressive was not really appreciated by the adults around you. Perhaps this creative drive was even actively discouraged or blocked. Perhaps you received many subtle or maybe not so subtle messages to get real, stop daydreaming and so on. Looking back, I still feel amazed at the journey I've been on. Coming from a place where I basically felt I had nothing to say or share with the world to where I am now. So I woke up in 1991 after the death of my father and this propelled me onto a spiritual journey. That journey brought me to this place where I've authored six published books. And I have now several channels, including this YouTube channel, where a tribe of starseeds are seemingly interested in the messages I have to share. I feel blessed that I followed a calling to write and become a published author. I'm now pretty well versed in the writing process, which means opening myself up to divine inspiration and allowing ideas just to emerge, take form and be released in the world so that whoever needs to be touched and inspired by these ideas will do so. I could have chosen not to put myself out in the world in this way. I could have allowed perhaps self-doubt and fear to block my channel of inspiration. But then again, having chosen the path, I now feel a great sense of joy and fulfillment that I have said yes to my mission rather than bow down to the resistance that all writers face. By saying yes to spirit, I have opened myself up as a channel and this has brought me closer to my higher self, closer to my guides and angels who are always there holding the journey. Now choosing this path means that you open yourself up to birth something new and unique that wouldn't exist without you. As a starseed writer, you become a channel, indeed a partner with forces that need you. This means you don't have to work it out all yourself. Your writing comes from a source beyond your conscious mind. The source of your inspiration is not of this world, though you can be inspired by many situations and people in the world. As you say yes to spirit, you open yourself up to ongoing inspiration and guidance that will help you shape your work. Now, I'm not asking you to believe in anything. You may not believe in angels or guides. You just need to open to a deeper part of yourself that knows the way. As you do this, you move from belief to experience. And in time, you feel that your mind and hands are being guided by unseen benign forces. Your job is to show up and allow these impulses of inspiration to just take shape. In my own experience, I've found writing to be a kind of multidimensional experience. All of my books were written like piecing a puzzle together. An idea would come that would turn into a book. I'd have a rough idea of how that book would need to be structured. But as I began writing, I found the structure might expand and perhaps I find myself writing chapter three before I go back to write chapters one and two. It can be a bit like that.
Let me mention overcoming resistance and blocks. Your time on this ascending earth is limited, which means you have a certain amount of time to express what needs to be expressed through you. It's a universal pattern that we will feel the call to express something and at the same time feel perhaps an equal and opposite sense of resistance or block to express ourselves. You may be a writer, a dancer, a singer, a poet, a composer, it doesn't matter. Every creative impulse, especially in the early stages, will be met with resistance which may show up externally before we realize that all resistance begins on the inside. One person who had a very bright soul mission to write that was blocked by his family is the Brazilian author Paulo Coelho, best known for his book The Alchemist. Paulo says about his experience. When I was young, my parents sent me to a mental institution three times between 1966 and 68. The reasons in my medical files are banal. It was said that I was isolated, hostile and miserable at school. I was not crazy, but I was rather just a 17-year-old who wanted to become a writer. Because no one understood this, I was locked up for months and fed tranquilizers. The therapy merely consisted of giving me electroshocks. I promised to myself that one day I would write about this experience so young people will understand we have to fight for our own dreams from a very early stage of our lives. Now the story of Paulo Coelho is one of incredible adversity and courage. Many starseed writers will certainly face a level of challenge and even opposition from those around them that do not understand their journey. Uh, for example, J.K. Rowling, the author of the successful Harry Potter series, went through a time of great poverty, struggling to make ends meet as a single mother. Much of her earliest work on the Harry Potter books were carried out in a cafe, scribbling her ideas on a cafe napkin and making her cup of tea last as long as possible. Now, my own drive for self-expression was rather less dramatic than Paolo Coelho's or J.K. Rowling's. When I began to awaken spiritually in 1991, slowly but surely, my desire to express myself in new ways began to emerge. It would actually take 10 years for this emerging creative impulse to take any form, or take the form of a book, for example. I just began my role as a director of Alternatives in 2000, which is a not-for-profit organization promoting spiritual authors, when I heard a voice in my mind saying, freeing the spirit. So I sat in meditation for some time with this phrase and the idea of a book began to emerge. By a strange set of synchronicities, I signed a book contract with Random House after about six weeks. And in 2002, Freeing the Spirit was published. Since then, I've written and published other books, of course. The most recent being The Spiritual Entrepreneur, which I self-published under my own banner, Soul Matrix Publishing. So why are so many starseeds called to write? Well, putting aside the very 3D idea that being an author will make you rich and famous, here are some higher vibe reasons you may be called to write. You may feel called to write for healing or personal growth. Many of my own books contain a self-healing element. For instance, my book, The Prosperity Game, helped me heal my 10 years of working in the finance industry. So my latest, The Spiritual Entrepreneur, was really a deep and powerful affirmation that I am a spiritual entrepreneur. You may feel called to write for the sheer joy of creative expression. This will be especially important if you grew up feeling you were invisible or did not really have a voice. You may feel you have something important to say or share. Perhaps this involves something of your own life. It can be incredibly helpful and inspiring to others who are just a few steps behind you on a similar journey to read about how you may have navigated certain challenges or traumas to get on track in your life. 
Many star seeds who have created a business feel called to write in order to further promote that business. And a book can be a brilliant calling card to let people know what you do and why it could serve them. Finally, you may want to leave a legacy to your family. Now, personally, I would love to know more about my grandparents' lives, but uh, I've only got a few stories that I remember. But my grandchildren have a much deeper understanding of my journey and my life. It's important to write from your heart. And some writers do start with the focus of writing a book to make money. Now, Spirit may guide you to write something that's in alignment with your business, if your business is that of, say, a healer or coach or therapist. But there's a great difference in writing just to sell. Do not be afraid to follow your heart and write what you feel truly called to write about. Now, I remember chatting with a friend who attended a very expensive seminar program. And part of that program involved being mentored to self-publish a book. After the program finished, I asked her how it went. She did indeed self-publish a book, but it was not the book she wanted to write from her heart. Her book mentor said her idea would not sell and she had to come up with something of a more commercially solid nature. Now, the resulting book did not really do very well and she was left, it seemed, with a sense of deep regret that she did not follow her heart and write the book that was a true calling. Writing is important because it helps you know what's within you, meaning it's a powerful way of releasing that vague concept of inner potential. You cannot really know what's truly inside of you as a writer or anything else for that matter. Whether that potential leads you to being an incredible dancer, potter, painter, entrepreneur or leader. Until you start the journey, there's no way of knowing your inner potential until you tap into what is within you and allow it to take some shape or form in the world. When I was a director of alternatives, hosting non-fiction spiritual authors, I learned a number of important lessons. One of these is that every writer is a storyteller, and that means all non-fiction writers. I've heard many non-fiction writers speak about their work, and the best were always fantastic storytellers. For instance, I heard Wayne Dyer speak in London back in the late 90s, and he had such a presence, such a voice, and his stories were so powerful and funny that I still remember some of them today. This is a sign of a great storyteller. Stories are great ways to convey a powerful theme or message. Great stories are evocative and sensory. They appeal to the right brain imagination. On the other side of this, I noticed at Alternatives that most academic speakers were pretty dull, actually, since they were used to speaking to the logical side of their audience. Writing is a way to discover your authentic self, meaning it helps you move beyond your conditioned self. It's a common pattern for starseeds, especially those born in dense 3D families, to lose their sense of self by trying to adjust themselves in some way to fit in. You are not here to write just anything. You are not here to write in a way that pleases any particular group of people. Your authentic self wants you to write something meaningful and important. It wants you to write something from your heart and soul. Your authentic self is not interested in you adjusting your writing to please or be accepted. When it comes to writing, it does not matter what your friends or peers think, what your family thinks, or even what your publisher thinks. But what's important is the deep impulse from your true self, the authentic self, when you listen to this part of you and what it wants you to express in the world, then your work will be in alignment with your soul's highest calling. I say this because it took me a few years to really understand this one. Starseed writers do not write alone. As already mentioned, starseed writers work in a divine collaboration with unseen forces, with unseen friends. 
And these unseen friends are primarily the higher self and guides and mentors on the inner planes working with you on your writing project. This means that the process of writing can be greatly amplified by learning to open to channel your inner guidance, the impulses of your team and spirit, the impulses of your soul. Your guides and angels are always wanting to connect with you so long as you're open, willing and listening. Communication can come through a sign in the outer world, such as a book falling off a bookshelf in front of you. Actually, a good friend had a book fall off a shelf and hit her, actually hit her. She bought the book and went to the USA to train with the author. And this set her on her own writing and healing journey. And she now she has her own coaching business. Really inspired by that day, the book fell and hit her off the bookshelf. Remember to ask for help and guidance. Guides and angels will not interfere with our free will. The caveat to this is asking for help is very different to begging for help. The latter puts you in the position of supplicant victim rather than the energy of your true sovereign being, true sovereign self. Ask that only beings of the highest truth and light be allowed to connect with you. Only beings who are aligned with your soul's destiny. Take time for silence, go into nature. Practice a deep inner listening. Align your energy through prayer and meditation. In time, you will hear the gentle voice of your guides and angels. Or you may just feel a deep inner knowing as information is downloaded into your energy systems. Release any judgments or assumptions about how your guides and angels want to communicate with you. Release all attachment to the contents of the communication. Often the most powerful guidance feels surprising but deeply true. Trust in your ability to channel. If this is something that interests you, then do check out my webinar called Channel Your Book that I usually run twice a year and that can be found on my events page on my website. Allow your writing to flow. You do not need to push the river. You do not need to push your inspiration or your writing. Your book already exists in some level of your consciousness. You are a channel, an instrument, and you are here to birth this book. Your job is to get out of the way of your own creative self-expression. Your job is to tune in. Your job is to see what wants to come through you into manifestation. Now thinking or even dreaming about writing is fine, but just be aware that waiting to feel ready or confident or whatever enough means you will never start. This may sound obvious, but to become a writer, you have to write. By starting, you develop your ideas, your skills, your voice, and you discover what you truly have to say. The more you write, the better you will get at it. As you write, you'll find that the flow of inspiration increases and your mind begins to open to new insights and new horizons. So here's a few practical tips about writing. Know your audience. Just have a think about who your ideal reader or, or audience is. At what point are they in their lives? What challenges do they face? What are they concerned about? What are they interested in or value? What are they looking for? What do they need or what's missing for them? What dreams or aspirations do they have? You're not here writing for everyone. Some people will naturally be turned off by your writing, not interested in what you have to say, and that's exactly how it should be. Think about your ideal reader in terms of gender, age, profession, background, values, hobbies. Now, some say you should write about what you know about. I say write about what you're passionate about. 
If you're passionate about something, then certainly you'll know a certain amount about that subject. Create a writing schedule. It's really important to make writing a priority. Diarise and ring fence your writing time. Let nothing intrude on that time. Stay on your edge. Writing is never meant to be comfortable. It is meant to take you out of your familiarity zone. This means you need to expose yourself to new situations and experiences. Stay inspired. Find your inspirational places to write. Places are important. There's also books, CDs, films, plays. They can all be sources of inspiration. Practice the art of noticing. Take a notebook with you to write down your ideas as you go about your daily activities. Hang out with other creative people. They may not be writers. They just have to appreciate the creative process. Avoid over editing. Very important when you get going. Let your writing stew for a day or two before you start thinking about editing. Deadlines. Now, if you sign a book contract, then you've agreed a deadline to submit your writing. If you're self-publishing, then you're basically setting your own deadline and you can move it. A deadline can be motivating for some and feel a pressure to others. Make sure any deadline you agree to does not cause anxiety or burnout. That would mean the deadline's too tight or not really realistic. Make sure your writing routine fits in with any agreed deadline. And finally, you've got to think beyond the book. It doesn't matter whether you're published or self-published. Authors are now required to put more energy into the marketing of the book. Think website, e-list, newsletter, blogs, podcasting, videos, social media. Think also when the book is ready that perhaps you'll do talks or readings or radio interviews or write magazine articles. I hope some of these thoughts and ideas are useful in supporting and inspiring your own writing process. Much love.